welcome to this edition of Aerial Insights. I'm Don Weigel, and today I'm here with James Harrison from UK-based Sky Futures. Welcome to the program, James. Thanks very much, Don. Pleased to be here. So, James, uh, Sky Futures is a drone services company. What, what does that mean? What do you guys do? Yeah, it's a great question. Actually, we consider ourselves a drone-enabled data company. So we're getting data that wasn't before accessible without using drones. So they're really the enabler for us, but we really care about the data and the insights that that can bring for our clients. And, and what type of work do you do? Are you focused on a particular vertical market or type of application? So we focus on oil and gas. It's, a, it's, a, it's an industry where they've got some really big problems that, are, that need solving. So it's, it's quite dangerous, so we really focus on increasing safety. And you're working with uh, you know, big rigs offshore, right, which are hard to access, hard to inspect, and hard to get good, accurate data sets from. So we really narrowed down to, to one industry segment and, and gone really deep on that vertical. So James, on a, on a typical oil rig or platform, what are the types of infrastructure that require inspection? Essentially, you've got a lump of metal out in the sea, which is highly corrosive. So it's a, it's a pretty good place to be if you want to do some inspections. Um, everything from the legs that physically go into the water to under the deck. And also, they've got uh, big flares, which are essentially a release valve. These are incredibly hot and produce a load of heat. So you've got the actual flare itself. You've got the heat shields, the structure that holds it up. So it's any structure that's hard to access by the workers physically on the rig. I mean, currently, they're climbing up or abseiling down on ropes to get the actual information and then taking pictures. That's dangerous, it's slow, and it costs a lot of money. So instead of doing that, we can fly the drones around and actually get that data really quickly and really safely. In inspecting those legs and flares in a, in a manual mode, people climbing up and down, how frequently is that done and, and how much more frequently can you do it with a drone? So currently, you've got a platform and you've only got a, a certain amount of days really where the guys can actually climb because there are limits, um, wind limits, so 21 knots. If it's above that, it's not safe for guys to be climbing on it outside of a platform above typically you know, water, um, where it could be freezing cold, you know, it's a very difficult environment. Um, but the, the platforms continuously need monitoring and inspecting. If you can inspect it all the time, you can do any preventative maintenance and you can make sure that platform stays up in great condition for longer. You can get more hydrocarbons out of the oil, out of the sea or the seabed. And you can actually, the company can be making more money over long term. So it's a, it's a really neat proposition. Now to, to shut down a, a flare, this is a very expensive proposition. Sure. What do people typically save by using a drone as opposed to shutting it down for a manual inspection? Well, I can give you a really neat real-life example. Yeah. So um, last, uh, last autumn, we were out offshore in Malaysia, um, and they had a, a planned shutdown for two months' time. So we went out and did an inspection of the live flare, the top of it, where it's really hot, where you can't typically do an inspection until you shut down. So right. we did that while it was online. We inspected five different complete scopes of work. So it was the flare, the flare boom, some of the legs... So before they shut the platform down, they knew what to expect. Um, we found some issues with it. We helped uh, help their team plan for the shutdown properly. Um, and in all, that saved uh, at least $4 million because we did find some significant issues that they wouldn't have been able to fix. So not only would they have had gone ahead with the shutdown, they couldn't have fixed the problem, and they'd have had to shut down again six months later. So it's a, it's a really, really neat way to save money. Now, are there, are there other ways that your customers are saving money using drone technology? For one large American uh, oil provider, we did an inspection in the North Sea, and we actually went through the case study and looked at how much we did in a certain time period against how long it takes for conventional means. So in five days, we get the same amount of data and inspections done as it takes eight weeks of people climbing. So just on a like-for-like on a -like basis, it's a huge saving. And that's you know, that's uh, an extra seven weeks and two days of less people at risk, um, obviously saving money. You're not having to fly people out in helicopters. You're not having to take up bed spaces on a rig. Now let's geek out a little bit and start talking about the drones themselves. What, what types of drones are you guys using to do these inspections? Actually, within the company, we've got four different types of drones, but the, the one main drone that we're using for the inspections is a Falcon 8. Um, we've been using that for just over four years. Um, we've got a lot of experience with it, uh, and it's very capable. The, the key things for us is kind of the high wind limits of that, the kind of data we can get off it. Um, and, and, but we're always looking and experimenting with new technology. What is the typical sensor package on, on your drones? Currently, we're running high definition uh, video and static and also thermal. So they're the kind of three kind of core payloads that we're running right now. 
But actually, we've got two Caprano products being launched very shortly. Um, one is a laser measurement, so we get sub one millimeter accuracy on, on kind of defects and problems on the platforms without actually touching it, because that was a, a big challenge set by the, the industry for us. And, and the second one is gas detection. So given that richness of data that you're collecting, what are the typical types of, of products that you're delivering to your customers? We, we were a bit surprised. We went into the industry and you get guys, you climb up, do an inspection and they produce a paper report. And it was almost like, this is really archaic. How can we kind of take this industry into the 21st century at least, you know, and kind of get everyone up to speed? Yeah. So we do produce the same kind of report because that's kind of what they're used to. But we have a, an inspection portal which we're launching where people can go in and actually kind of slice and dice the data in a much more effective way and actually engage in it in a really rich manner. I would guess with all the metadata you're collecting, you, you would have the ability to do time series analysis. The rate of change of a problem over time gives you all sorts of things. It gives you your predictive maintenance. You can then schedule everything a lot more effectively. If you've got a problem, you know you don't have to shut down necessarily. We can say, well, look, the last 15 rigs that we did in the North Sea that have got this type of steel did this. So you can be assured you're getting a lot more information so the structure engineers can make informed decisions. That's never been done before. Tell me, how, how do your operators actually fly the drone? Is there any level of autonomy or are they flying remote control? Sure, there is quite a little, lot of autonomy on the drone itself. Um, but for safety, we have the guys flying with sticks. Um, it might sound a bit backwards, but if you're using a 2D tablet in a 3D environment, it's very difficult to control the drone effectively. So there's lots of problems um, that we've solved over time that you wouldn't be necessarily aware of. The issues with um, magnetism on the actual platform, so shielding the GPS all the way through to the spoofing and all that kind of issues that you, that you wouldn't necessarily um, know were there. What about regulatory concerns? Is that an issue for you in the United States versus in Europe or other parts of the world? The regulatory landscape here is changing incredibly fast. As we kind of cut our teeth in, in, in the UK, in kind of Norway, France, um, and all across kind of in Southeast Asia particularly. So we got a lot of experience. And so it meant when the US opened up, we got the, the 46th you know, exemption to the triple three. So now we're, we're able to work commercially here as well with the experience. So, I mean, from a selfish point of view, it was great for us. Our thoughts are that actually the, the FAA are going to be way ahead of the other aviation authorities very soon. Um, they don't do things slowly here. When they do decide on something, it moves a heck of a rate. Well, we hope so too. Hey, James, thanks so much. Yep, thank you very much for having me. Cheers.